Why, hello, hello, folks. So, something that a lot of people have been requesting that I do is a sort of like a guide to modding in Warframe. And more specifically, from like an ultimate sort of beginner's point of view. Because uh, there are a couple of guides out there already, but a, a common complaint is that like even though they say that they are for beginners or like for everyone, uh, they still go into like too much high level stuff and too much math and, and, and stuff like that. And it's like, what you really want is a real sort of like modding for dummies, like going to the absolute, absolute, absolute basics for brand new players who don't want to get bogged down with too much complicated stuff and basically just want to be told how do I get my weapon to do more damage when I shoot it. And we're gonna we're gonna go through that right now. So typically when you have like a, an unmodded weapon, you know it looks something like this. Uh, normally you're gonna have uh, like three different damage types. Impact, puncture and slash. And they're gonna be sort of like weighted differently. Sometimes some weapons also can have some innate uh, elemental damage type that they do, but but this is the most typical thing. And the most common mistake that I'm gonna say beginners uh, make when modding their weapons is that uh, they're running with unranked mods and just trying to uh, get as many mods uh, into the weapon as possible to like fill every mod slot. So you'll see something like Hornet Strike, you'll see something like Razor Shot put in there, um, stuff like that. Maybe some elemental damage type as well. Uh, you can see, uh, put in a, a Heated Charge, uh, and, and then you can go with Pathogen Rounds, yeah, sure, whatever. And, and just filling up every mod slot like this, uh, so the weapon is like completely, uh, completely jam-packed. So you end up with a weapon that looks, I don't know, something like this. And with, with, with modding this wave, we pretty much doubled the damage. We've gone from a DPS of 32 to 59. And this is really not good at all. And this is not how you should uh, build your weapons. Because the difference uh, between modded, uh, like ranked up mods and unranked mods are huge. They are astronomical. So... If you have an unranked Hornet Strike, it increases damage by 20%. If you have a maxed out Hornet Strike, it increases damage by 220%. So, with one mod alone, we just did twice as much as we did by filling every mod slot. So, that's my first tip. Rank up your mods. If that means that you can't fill every mod slot, then that's that's fine. That's fine. That's better. So for a a just a weapon that has 30 mod capacity, just sticking like two elemental mods that are maxed out and one hoarded strike like this, increasing up the damage like 280. Um, this is better. This is better than than just filling out the entire weapon with unranked mods. It is going to do so much more for you. And now the next point I'm going to talk about is actually very important uh, because this is sort of like how you unlock everything, your understanding of how modding works. And that is you have to uh, separate damage into two types, uh, which is additive damage and multiplicative damage. And basically... This is how you get the stupid damage numbers on your weapon. If you only put in the same kind of damage types, then all, you, all you're doing is just adding more and more to a number. Um, for example, uh, Hornet Strike, it increases the base damage of the weapon. Magnum Force also increases the base damage of the weapon. So you might think, oh... That's good, we can just keep on increasing base damage and increasing base damage and increasing base damage even more. And well, here, this increases the slash damage of the weapon, so that's also part of the base damage. And as you can see, the number doesn't go that high, and that is because of a concept called diminishing returns. So without getting too technical here, what this means is 
uh, if you just keep on adding more and more of the same damage type, uh, the overall uh, increase uh, is going to, to lessen uh, over time. So just increasing Hornet Strike by like 220% the base damage. But if you add Magnum Force, it doesn't increase by like... See, it's 100 and then it went to 150. It's not plus 165 from the new number. It's still plus 165 from the base number. So what used to be the weapon more than tripling in damage, which is what should happen with plus 220%, um, by adding this, we only increase it from, from 100 to 155. So that's only at that point a 50% increase even though it says plus, plus 165. That is because if you add these numbers together, 165 and 220, that's 385. And this is actually a 385% increase in the damage. So just stacking the same damage type over and over again uh, is not going to make the weapon that much more damaging. Because... You're just using the plus sign. It's damage plus damage plus damage. What you want to be using is the multiplication sign. Damage times damage times damage. And the way to do that is by using different damage types. So we don't need both Hornet Strike and Magnum Force. We only need one of them. After that, we go to Elemental Damage. And Elemental Damage is a different damage type and uh, it, it's added to the new total number. So here we have 100. Convulsion, it's plus 90%, so it should round, it should end up at like 190 something, right? And it does end up at 190. So even though this one, Magnum Force, says plus 165, and Convulsion says plus 90, this actually meant a bigger damage increase because it is a different damage type. You're multiplying. Typically, you want like a couple of elemental damage mods before you start seeing the diminishing returns, but the same thing applies here. Don't want to stack too much of the same type of damage. So now we have our base damage and we have our elemental damage. However, to keep on demonstrating how different damage types interact with each other, we're going to need more mod capacity. It's also very important. Now, uh, there are a couple of different ways you can increase the mod capacity of your weapon. One of them uh, is that you can get an Orokin Catalyst. You can insert that into a weapon and you will permanently double the mod capacity of that weapon. Very powerful. So, either... You spend platinum in the market to get those. Or uh, you can get them from rare alerts or invasion sometimes drop them or whatnot. But th that's very uncommon. Uh, what you can also do is you can go to the Nightwave store. Nightwave is the uh, weekly sort of challenges to do different things. Unlock a mod of... Uh, unlock a relic of each tier. Do three exterminate missions. Do three assassination missions. Stuff like that. And you collect points. And you can earn these uh, credits that can be spent in, in the store here. Uh, you can earn credits along the path as well. Uh, just, oh, look there, some 50 credits. Oh, 150 credits. Uh, along the path, you can also get a Roken Reactors and Roken Catalysts uh, by just, you know, reaching higher tiers. But then once you have these credits, you can go to the Cred Offerings and you can purchase Roken Catalysts and Roken Reactors. Catalysts are for doubling the mod capacity of a weapon. Reactors are for doubling the mod capacity of a Warframe. So if you have something that you uh, like and that you want to invest in and that you know, want to build up, uh, get one of these, slot that in, it's time and you can double the mod capacity. So let's do that so we can keep on showing this off. We shall purchase one Roken Catalyst from some of my spare creds. And... we Go back to the arsenal. And slot that in. Boom. 
we have now permanently doubled the mod capacity of this weapon. So now we have a lot more room to play around with. We can also uh, use this polarized slot to, uh, to make it cost less. What that is, is you can see here that certain slots on the weapon, they have polarities. And there are mods that have corresponding polarities. So what, uh, what that's for is that if you slot in a mod that has the corresponding polarity, it only takes up half the drain. So this is a mod that should have a drain of 14, but when you slot it, the Madurai mod in the Madurai slot, it only costs seven. So that means you can get more mods in there. Same with this, corresponding polarity costs less. Um, that is obviously very important for your modding. So once you run out of mod capacity again, if you want to use like leveled up high ranked mods, uh, how do you fix that? And how you do that is with something called Forma. Forma is an item that lets you add a polarity to the uh, uh, any slot in the weapon. And you can build Forma. You can build Forma, cost more fixed neural sensors, neuros and rokin cells. So, you know, it's not super cheap for a new player. 35,000 credits as well. However, however, it's very important. So it, it takes like almost 24 hours to build a Forma. And you get them from doing relic missions. If, you just, if you've collected a bunch of relics and you want to do your relic missions, you will see that uh, most relics also have a Forma as one of the possible rewards. I'm going to recommend that you stockpile Forma blueprints and keep that foundry warm so that you are always, always, always constantly building Forma because you're going to need it. You're going to need a lot of Forma all the time. So, when you have Forma, you can go to your weapon. You can go to the action bar down here. You can use the Forma to add a polarity to a slot that doesn't have it, or changing the polarity uh, of a slot that already has one. So let's do that. And boom. Now what this does is that it actually drops the weapon down, back down to unranked. It has to be a max ranked weapon to put in a Forma. Once you put in a Forma, it goes back down to unranked and you have to level it up again. So if you have a weapon that you want to put a lot of Forma in, you have to level it up from 0 to 30 over and over and over and over again. Now you only get mastery points for the first time you level up a weapon, but you know, this is, this is how you do it. So now we have two different damage types. We have base damage and elemental damage. Now it's time to add another damage type. And for that, you're going to want to find mods that can give you multi-shot. Multi-shot basically just means more bullet. <laughs> it's the easiest way to explain it. Uh, plus 120% multi-shot means that every shot you fire is actually 2.2 shots. So that is also multiplicative with your other stuff. Because if, if every shot is just two shots, then that you just doubled your damage. And since this is 2.2, you can see that it actually represents more than doubling your damage. It went from 286 to 630. Next up, we want to double it again. And the way to do that is by adding crits. Uh, crit chance and crit damage... You can see that there's a stat that is on every weapon. It's a very important stat because crits typically do double damage or more in some cases. That depends. That goes from weapon to weapon. For example, this, the Aklato, the Akboto Prime that I'm using here, it has a base crit multiplier of 2.8 times. So it's a pretty good crit multiplier as it is. So if we slot in something like Pistol Gambit for crit chance... We got crit chance up to 79%. I can use like a, a stronger version here to demonstrate that you can actually get it up to like 100%, which means that every shot is guaranteed 
to be a crit. So every shot is guaranteed to do double damage. Now, what's interesting here is that this is not going to change the number down here showing your total damage. It still says 630, but in practice, it just went up to 1200 if, if, you know, if a crit would do double damage. This one actually does more than double damage. You can also add mods to increase the crit damage. So, for example, here, if a crit does 4.5 times damage and the crit is guaranteed, even though it says 600 here, we're actually getting up close to like 2,500, 3,000 damage, so something like this. But we can actually multiply this even further. We can use fire rate. If your weapon shoots twice as fast and, you know, fires 10 bullets in the same time that it used to fire 5 bullets, it doesn't change the number here, but you are actually, again, sort of like doubling your damage output. We can increase the damage even further uh, with some, some sort of uh, wacky uh, methods. For example, say that we had a weapon uh, that explodes, like a rocket launcher or something. Then there are mods that increase the blast radius of those weapons. Now, increasing the blast radius means that you hit more enemies with one shot, which also effectively simply means that you do more damage per second. And this is the difference between uh, sort of sheet DPS, which is what your DPS is on paper, um, and your, uh, your effective DPS. So you won't see this as a number here for your damage per second, but in practice, it means you will do more damage. There is another stat you can use, not for uh, pistols, because pistols don't have that, uh, but ah, there is something called punch through. Punch through straight up means that your weapon is going to shoot through enemies, sometimes even through walls, depending on how much punch through they have. Uh, and you can hit several enemies in a row with your, with your shot just punching right through them. So, again, if you only fire one bullet, but it hits three enemies at the same time, that represents <laughs> three times more damage per second. And then we have something called the faction mods, which are really interesting. And that is mods that only do damage against a uh, certain enemy type. Uh, in the case of this one against Grunir, uh, let's see. We have like a normal expel Grunir as well. So if you put that in, again, it does not change the DPS number down here. Because the DPS number down here is only going to be base damage, uh, elemental damage, and what we call IPS, impact, puncture, and slash. So if I were to add like a slash increasing mod, that would actually increase the base number here. Um, this number, it basically didn't increase at all, even though it says plus 120% slash. And that is because, as you can see, it does a very, very small amount of slash damage at its base, <clears throat> and only slash damage got increased when I put that in. So slash damage went from 4 <clears throat> to 9. A very small increase. Typically, the mods that increase IPS, that is impact, puncture, and slash, typically they are not worth using. <clears throat> because even if the values here would be the same, like 30% impact, 30% puncture, 30% slash, putting this in would only increase the base damage by like 30% or so, uh, even less actually. It's some complicated math, just know that the bonus from MAME and the other IPS mods uh, is less than the bonus you get from Hornet Strike for just increasing base damage. Uh, the only reason why you want to use something like, for example, MAME, is if you want to increase the so-called slash weight. That is, that you, the, you want the weapon to do mostly slash damage, for example. And that has to do with status chance, which is a bit more complicated. All I'll say now is that typically uh, that is something you can ignore. 
it is not a priority. But going back to the faction mods, for example this one, the Primed Expel Grenier, the game doesn't tell you this, but this is actually not base damage. This is uh, its own damage type, it is applied at the end after everything else has been applied. You add your base damage, you add your elemental damage, you add your multi-shot, you add all of that, you get this new number, and this number is the one that gets bumped by 55%. So these faction mods actually increase your damage massively, massively against that specific faction. Now, a lot of people don't run these simply because they think it's clunky. They don't like having to mod uh, the weapon specifically for a certain mission. That, like, you just want your loadout that's always going to work no matter what you do. But if you are struggling uh, with, with damage output, just know that these mods exist and know that they are very, very powerful. Now we're also going to talk about status chance, because status chance, it is a bit more complex, but I will explain it uh, as simply as I can. Every damage type also has an associated status effect. And the status chance just represents how likely you are to inflict an enemy with that status effect when you hit them. Uh, IPS, Impact Puncture and Slash, they have associated status effects, and you can get more status effects by adding elemental damage and combinations of elemental damage. In this case, I added heat and electricity, and those two combined gives you the status uh, chance or the status effect called radiation. Now, different elemental uh, types are more or less effective against different factions, uh, but mostly you care about their associated status effect. In the case of radiation, the status effect is called confusion, and it makes enemies shoot each other. So if you inflict a radiation status effect on an enemy, uh, it will start shooting his uh, former friends instead of shooting at you, which is nice. There are some pretty nifty mods that you want to try to get your hands on. Uh, they are mods that increase both elemental damage and status chance. Uh, these mods are typically considered pretty premium. So if you slot these in, for example, we got some heat. And we got some cold. And we got some toxin. Uh, what we get now is a combination of two different... Uh, elements that's called heat and viral. Notice that which elements you get depends on how you order the weapons, I mean the mods. So if I reorder them so that the heat mod is here and the toxin mod is here, now we instead get toxin as a single element and the combination of hot and cold, uh, which is a blast. Or maybe I'll do this. And then we'll get cold plus gas. So how this works is if you have uh, multiple elements slotted in, it goes from top left down to bottom right. So the bottom right one gets last priority, which means that one doesn't combine with the others, that one stays by itself. Um, Good to know because different uh, different elements can be it can be quite important to know this. For example, heat plus viral is considered a very strong combination, um, whereas toxin plus blast would in most cases be much weaker because blast is considered a pretty bad status chance or status effect. So, heat plus viral, that's pretty nice. Why is that? Well, because viral, uh, the associated status effect of viral is uh, enemies take more damage. So if you hit an enemy with a viral status effect, suddenly they just take more damage from your weapons. And as it says on this tooltip, this can stack up to 325% more damage on every shot. And you need to put 10 viral procs on an enemy to get it up to 325%. So if you can get the status chance really, really high, get it up to... Well, this is 40% here, but there are weapons that can get up to like 100% status chance and, and, and uh, guaranteed status procs on, on enemies. Obviously, 
Uh, here it matters if you have a weapon that can fire really fast. If you have a machine gun or something that can fire like 20 shots per second, and every shot has a 40% status chance, then you're going to just unload on an enemy and you're just going to fill them up with all kinds of status procs. Whereas if you have a weapon that only fires like one shot at a time, it's going to be harder uh, to get the amount of status procs you want on an enemy. Put it as simply as possible, the higher the fire rate of the weapon, uh, the more effective uh, status chance is as a stat. Now heat, on the other hand, uh, is a status effect that causes a slight stun because the enemies start, you know, they get set on fire and they move around and they try to put the fire out and they can't shoot you for a while. But it also gives them a damage over time effect. And what's interesting about heat is that you can stack just as many of these as you want. You can put 50, 60, 70 heat procs on an enemy and each one is going to do a little bit of damage over time. They also decrease the enemy's armor, if they have armor. Uh, Corrupted and Grunir have armor. Now how this works is that you have a 40% status chance, which means that every shot has a 40% chance of increasing a status effect. And then the question is, okay, but which status effect is it gonna, is it gonna deliver? We have Impact, Puncture, Slash, Heat, Viral. These are five different damage types, so there are five different status effects that an enemy could be hit with. How to determine which one it's going to be? It is a probability based on how much damage that status effect does. So in this case, since Viral is the strongest damage type here, Viral does 122 damage, uh, whereas Heat only does 60 and Slash only does 4. It is more likely that the status effect is going to be a Viral proc than a Heat proc or a Puncture proc or whatever. It's basically never going to be a slash proc. It's going to be a slash proc like like 1% of, of the time. Now this is where you can uh, manually alter this stat. For example, uh, I talked about that before uh, with MAME. Say you have a weapon that has like a decently high slash stat from the beginning. And you really, really want the slash status effect. Which is also a very strong damage over time effect then by increasing the slash damage and increasing the slash weight, you just made it more likely that the status effect is going to be slash. Now in this case, this is not enough. The base, the base slash damage is too low. You can't get that up high enough. So with this weapon, that wouldn't work. But say you want more heat. You don't want, you don't want viral to be dominant because hey, it caps at 10 viral procs. You can't put more than 10 viral procs on an enemy. So if you can put 10 viral procs on an enemy, but 100 heat procs, then you don't want every status effect to be a viral proc. That's a waste of damage. So what we can do is we can simply increase the heat damage specifically by putting all of the heat mods here in the bottom right. Now we do more heat damage than viral damage, which means the status effect is instead going to be weighted toward heat procs. Which, you know, typically is what we want in this situation. Now, what every single element does and how they interact with each other, that's a bit too complicated. Uh, so I, I'm not going to go into it in more detail than I have right here. This is just a very quick primer to explain how status chance works and how that can affect your overall damage output. In general... Viral is good. If you have viral on your weapon, a high status chance and a high fire rate, you're going to see your damage numbers go up considerably. So where do you get these good mods, uh, the ones you need? Hornet Strike, that's a very common drop. You get it from like running endless missions on Earth. Like eventually you're just going to get a Hornet Strike. It's not really something you have to hunt for. When it comes to primary weapons, what you want is a mod called Serration. Uh, serration is the, for an early game player, Serration is by far, by far the most important mod that you can get because it increases the base damage of the weapon and then everything else that you add uh, is going to stack with that, uh, with, with just, it's going to multiply by the base damage of the weapon. So there is no more important mod you can get as a new player. Uh, I recommend running Spy Missions. Spy Missions 
low level. You can run them on Earth. This one right here, Cambria. You can run it on Venus. This one right here, Anda. And successfully open all three spy vaults. Uh, if you successfully open all three spy vaults, the third one uh, can have serration. If you just run this mission for long enough, open all three vaults, you'll get a serration mod. Another pretty good spot to hunt for some, uh, some important mods is on Deimos. If you run the normal missions on Deimos, for example this capture mission right here, uh, there are special doors. To open these doors you need to be a part of a clan and you need to build something called a dragon key. <laughs> you can just get the blueprints for those from your clan. And um, these keys open these dragon doors on Deimos. They contain these so-called corrupted mods. Uh, I showed you one called Heavy Caliber. It is mods that give uh, both a positive and a negative stat. Typically the positive stat far outweighs the negative one. Collecting all of these corrupted mods uh, is very good for just helping you uh, mod your weapon. Another important set of mods that can be found on Deimos uh, is some melee mods called uh, Weeping Wounds, Blood Rush and Condition Overload. They are three extremely important mods for increasing your overall melee damage. Uh, you can get Weeping Wounds and Blood Rush as bounty rewards from doing the bounties for the faction here. And uh, you can get Condition Overload as just a random drop from just enemies out here in the Cambion, Cambion Rift. So if you just play enough bounties and just do enough open world stuff in, in uh, Deimos, you will eventually get that mod. Uh, those three mods combined, they do a whole lot uh, to increase your overall melee damage. You might also have noticed that I have these mods that are white in border, so-called primed mods. The primed mods are simply stronger versions of normal mods that are sold by Barrow Kitir, the Void Trader. He shows up every two weeks at one of the relays. And it shows you with a map marker which relay he is at, if he is currently here. You also get an inbox message notifying you when Barrow has arrived. Uh, to buy Prime mods from him, you're gonna need uh, a resource called the Roken Ducats. And those you get from farming Prime parts in Relic missions and selling them uh, in the kiosks at the relays where Barrow is hanging out. Now we can talk about modding for, for days. There are other stats that I haven't even covered yet, such as for shotguns and, and similar weapons, you have something called fall off, which is that they, they decrease in damage uh, the further away uh, the enemy is. And there are, uh, for example, mods that can increase uh, projectile flight speed, and projectile flight speed will in fact also uh, increase uh, the fall off so that you can shoot enemies from further away which is you know also something that increases your damage uh, there is a there is a million things to learn uh, it is a complex system but if we're gonna keep it down to the basics you want multiplicative damage not additive damage so you don't want to stack too much of the same damage type. You want different types of damage that interact with each other. You want to increase your base damage. You want to add multi-shot. You want to add elemental damage. You want to add crit chance and crit damage. You want to increase your fire rate. You want to have certain elemental combos. And if you need a bit more oomph, you can add the faction mods to really, really kick ass against one specific faction. Those are the key basics to get going. We have a weapon that has 32 damage as its base value. Just from this little tutorial here, we increased the, this number up to 766, but in actuality, it is much higher because this number does not take into account crits. It does not take into account fire rate. It does not take into account punch through. It does not take into account uh, explosion radius if it is a blaster weapon. It does not take into account faction damage. So actually this number is far, far higher than 766. 
So we've basically uh, increased our damage like by a hundredfold right here. So that's the basics. That's the basics <laughs> of modding for weapon damage. Uh, but it should be it, like this just but by these tips that's enough to let you like easily kill like level 100 enemies trust me on this this just, just if you didn't know these things and uh you know, try to put this into practice i think you'll be surprised by just how much more damage you're going to be doing in the future so take that with you and please leave a like comment and subscribe <laughs> all that jazz if, if you liked this video and you thought it was helpful and I will see you again tomorrow for something completely different.